So here in this lesson, we will be learning about how to do the mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry conversion with the integration of the molar mass calculation. So we need to be able to calculate first the molar mass before we will be able to um, convert from mass to mass. So let's go ahead and study this example here that we are given. So we are given the balanced chemical equation P4O10 plus H2O, and then we have um, arrow for H3PO4. So this particular this particular balanced chemical equation, if you examine it, our equation is not that balanced at all. Let's inspect first if the equation is balanced. So we have four P's. And in the other side, there's a 4 coefficient, so 4, and then the P here is 1. So 4 times 1, that is 4 P's. So P is balanced. Next is the oxygen. Oxygen is 10, and plus 1 here, that's 11. So there's something wrong, because if you look at it here, oxygen on the right side, that's a 4, and then you multiply it by 4, then that should be 16. So the oxygen is not balanced. And if we look at also our hydrogen, hydrogen on the left side, we have 2. And then the hydrogen here on the right side is 4 times 3, that is a 12. So let's balance first our hydrogen and make it 12 on the left side. So because 4 times 3 is 12, and so on the left side, the 2, we can make the 2 a 12 by multiplying it to 6. So we have to put a coefficient of 6 in this part here. So that 6 times 2 will be 12. And by putting a 6, let's check our oxygen. Oxygen is 6 here because that's 6 times 1. So we have 6 oxygen. And then plus 10 here. So we have a total of 16 oxygen. And on the, on the right side, if we multiply 4 and a 4 for this oxygen here, that's also a 16. So therefore, we need to put this 6 here so that the equation will be balanced. And now, because our equations are balanced, our coefficients will now be, there's nothing here for P4O10, so that's understood to be 1. So we have 1, and then 6, and then the 4 was already written for us there. So this is now our balanced chemical equation. Now it's time for us to read our problem so that we can solve it. So the problem states, if you have 456.78 grams of H2O, how many grams of H3PO4 will you form? So you see a given number and the substance together with it. So that means this is our given. So please, if you don't want to get confused, label your paper so that the given is really the given. Okay? And then in the question, how many grams of H3PO4 will you form? So grams H3PO4, the substance is H3PO4. It means that is our required substance. Okay? So now that we've labeled correctly what's our given and what's our required, the first step is, because we're not given the molar mass, of course, we have to calculate for the molar mass. I have divided here where to place the molar mass of the given, so it's the first one, and the second one is the molar mass of the required. So it is just but right to write the chemical formula of your given, because that's going to be your guide to calculate for the molar mass. So the given substance is H2O. So I'm just going to put it beside the label of the chart. And the required substance is H3PO4. So I'm just going to put that also there. Okay? Now, please do not be tempted to look at the balanced chemical equation when you're doing the molar mass. Do not do that mistake. So if you see that there's a 6 beside H2O, the 6 here, the coefficient 6, is not, not part of the molar mass calculation. No, not part. The reason for these coefficients are for the mole ratio later on, but not for the molar mass. So stick to the chemical formula. So I suggest just look at the problem. So H2O, H2O, H3PO4, H3PO4. So that's for the molar mass part. 
And now we're ready to look at the breakdown of the elements so that we can put the values after. So H2O, that means H2, there's a subscript 2. It means that we have 2 hydrogen. And then the oxygen doesn't have a subscript. It means that you have 1 oxygen. Then multiply it, multiply it to the to the ones that is found on your periodic table. So hydrogen on the periodic table is 1.008, and you can make it two decimal places, so you can have it 1.01. .01. And then we know for a fact that our oxygen is 15.999, and so we can just round it up to 16. And after putting the atomic mass values from the periodic table, we have to multiply it individually first. So 2 times 1.01, .01, that is 2.02. .02. And then we have 1 times 16. Again, this is oxygen, not a 0. That's your element O. That's not a number. So 1 times 16, that will just be 16. And then after multiplying, we know the process that we have to add everything. So 2.02 .02 .02 plus 16 we get 18.02 grams per mole. Do not forget to put the unit grams per mole for the molar mass. Then we do the same for H3PO4. Be careful if you have more than two elements. It can get tricky, but stick with the subscript that you see. So yes, you see H3, so that means you have three hydrogen. And then the P doesn't have a subscript. It means that you have one of that. And then you have O4, so that means you have four oxygen. So four oxygen. Then we look at the periodic table chart. We know that hydrogen is 1.01. .01, and then the P on the periodic table is 30.974. We can just stick to the two decimal places. So we're going to use 30.97. And then, of course, oxygen is the same as the first one. We have 16. Then we do the multiplication. So 3 times 1.01, .01, you get 3.03. .03. 1 times 30.97 is 30.97. And then 4 times 16, that is 64. And then we add everything. So if you want to use your calculator, go use it. But you can also add it manually. So let me add it manually. So you have the plus 7, 0, carry 1, you'll have 0 also, carry 1, so you'll have 8, and then that will be a 9. So that's 98.00, again, grams per mole for the unit. So now, if you're done with your molar mass, may I suggest that you recheck it before you proceed to the mass-to-mass -mass conversion. Recheck your values. If you got it really correctly, it's better than, than rushing it. And then in the end, you have to go back again if, if it happens to be incorrect. So you have to keep on rechecking first your molar mass if you really got the correct values. Now, once you are assured that you got the correct values for molar masses, I will just highlight this to emphasize that we're going to use those total. Okay, now we're ready to do the mass to mass conversion. So the same outline. We'll put the given mass, then the molar mass of the given, then the mole ratio, and again mm or the molar mass, this time of the required, and then we get the final answer. Okay, so let's do the given mass. Where do we get the given mass? When we say given mass, it's always the one in the problem, the one in the statement of your problem. So you get 456.78 grams H2O. That's our given. So please copy it accurately. I see some work in which by copying the given from the problem, it was incorrect already. So that means, of course, if the numbers are incorrect, you're, you're not going to get the accurate answer as well. So please be careful in copying exactly the given value. So 456.78 grams and it's H2O, so we put H2O there. And then we put multiply, and then we'll just put the parentheses here. We're just going to put the three parentheses that should be in place for this mass-to-mass -mass conversion. So three sets of parentheses, and of course we don't forget that we have that line that will separate the numerator from the denominator. 
Okay. So now, let's put in the molar mass of the given. Where's our given? There you are. So molar mass of the given. So that means we're going to use the 18.02 for this step. Okay? Because it's the given. Now, where do we place the gram and where do we place the mole? It follows that if this is the gram in your given and you need to cancel it out, logically, you need to have another gram below. So therefore, the 18.02 gram has to be there below. And of course, because it's molar mass, it's always one mole up there. And the substance is H2O. So please do not forget to write H2O for both the top and the bottom because it's molar mass. The substance has to be the same. And now, you can cancel gram H2O and gram H2O for this part. After that, we're now going to go to the mole ratio. The mole ratio is between your given substance and the required substance. So the substance at the bottom has to be the same as the given, which is H2O, and the substance on top is always the required substance, which is H3PO4. So you have to make sure that you write the mole ratio positioning of your substances correctly. Let me repeat. The substance down here has to be the same as the given, and the substance up here should be the one you are trying to solve, the required. And once you are assured that you've placed the correct substances, then you go ahead <clears throat> and look at the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. H3PO4 has a coefficient of 4, so you put 4 here. Do it one by one, please. And then H2O, H2O is here. The coefficient is 6, therefore you put 6 moles here. Okay? So that's the mole ratio part. And you notice that mole H2O and mole H2O gets to cancel out as well. And lastly, we have the molar mass of the required. So molar mass of the required is the one in the second column up here. So 98, where do we put the gram and where do we put the mole? Because we need to cancel out this mole here. So therefore, it's logical to put the one mole below this time and the gram, the 98 value, will be at the top this time. Okay? And of course, we don't forget that this is for H3PO4. So you put H3PO4 both for the up and the down. So your mole H3PO4 and mole H3PO4 gets to cancel out. And you are left with just the one uncancelled unit, which is pattern or which matches with the question of the problem, which is the grams H3PO4. So that matches there. And once we have done the calculation, by the way, if you notice a pattern in a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry, you see a pattern here. Look at the pattern of the substance. This is H2O, 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 and H. So the pattern, the substance here for the first four, look, one, two, three, four, should be the same substance. That's the pattern of the cancellation of units. And then this substance up here, all the way to the last two, they're always the same substance, if you look at that. So when you check your solution, does it follow the pattern? So ask yourself. And the pattern of cancellation, which I strongly suggest now that in your solution you have to show me also the cancellation of units. The cancellation of units, it's like slanting pattern. So this and that, this and this, and then this and this. So that's like slanting. Okay? That's why you canceled six times in here. So there's always a pattern that we notice every time we do any type of conversion solution. Okay? Now let's go ahead and group all our numbers, all the ones at the top and all the ones at the bottom. So the top always starts with a given. We have 456.78. Then times 1, I'll just emphasize times 1 here, then times 4, and then times 98.00. Okay, I'll just put it as 98 so it will fit. Then divided by the one at the bottom, 
is 18.02, then times 6, and the times 1, I'll just emphasize it there. Okay? Now, go ahead and go to your calculator. If you're using an ordinary calculator, please multiply separately the numbers at the top and the numbers at the bottom. So, if you multiply all the ones at the top, you will get, please calculate with me, we have 179,057.76. Okay? Please let me know if you did not get the correct answer from your end. And then the ones at the bottom will have a product of 108.12. So those are the separate products for the numbers at the top and the numbers at the bottom. Now once you get the numbers both at the top and the bottom, it's time for us to divide them. So 179,057.76 divided by 108.12, then we will get an answer of 1,656.76. 10 in two decimal places. And the final answer should follow the unit that's uncancelled, which is gram H3PO4. So this is now our final answer for this item. Let me know if you have any questions about this.